Good morning, it's Zandra Pollard with It's Where I Am. And today our guests are comedic actor Faison Love. I would find your insightful. And also Tim Harden of Desert Parkway Hospital. Good morning. Our topic today are the psychological and physiological effects of laughter. Hence why I have my uh, guest here, Faison Love, to Can bring you say some... that again, please? The, the what? The, the, psychological. the psychological, psychological, physiological, physiological. Effects, effects of laughter. If you say that three times, you end up in a business. So this is what we all humans <laughs> understand the conditions of laughter, right? So we all have this human response to um, something that's basically funny, right? So please be serious. You can be funny, but be serious. Okay. Okay, because I have some serious questions for you. For me? Yes. <laughs> but I also want, I have Tim here as my um Tim looks serious. Yes, Tim is serious. He's my mental health. Tim looked like he was playing for the Raiders. They just come. Kind of... <laughs> oh, he man. was sparring yesterday, actually. So yeah. Last a... week. Yeah. Last right. week. What happened? I fractured my wrist on the on the on the, on the field sparring. No sparring. Yeah, yeah boxing. Kung fu. Kung fu. What you say? Kung fu. MMA. Kung fu. That's how we yeah, say it. Kung oh, fu. Right. Kung okay. fu. Yes. So he was doing, I was doing Kung Fu. Tim is from Desert Parkway Hospital, and last month, if you listened in, we had Chief Stevenson from the Las Vegas Fire and Rescue here, and they were talking about the pilot that they have mm -hmm. in partnership with Desert Parkway Hospital to, for patients who have, okay, when people, when there's callers from 911 and they're medically cleared, they can go directly to Desert Parkway Hospital, right? Correct. So, mm -hmm. Tim is here to continue that conversation for those who um, are in need of mental health services. If there's a 911 call, they're medically cleared, there's a pilot where a social worker can potentially be in the ambulance with that patient and they can go directly to the hospital. Is right. that correct? Correct. I'm lost. Don't be lost. If we have to call 911, phase on. And you're medically cleared, and you may need to see someone. You have to be medically cleared. You, you can go, go straight to, to the, Well, see, first they take you to the emergency room. Yeah. So, but they're trying to cut that process for those who are medically cleared. Their vitals are good, but they have a, a mental illness that's possibly known, right? There's already a history. Well, how do you know that? Or your record? Records. Um, so, you, you, you get shot. They go, hey, we can't take you because we heard you were crazy. No, if you're shot, you're going directly to the emergency room. I'm, I'm so lost. You, you can go in. I'm, what? Okay, so if there's a mental health condition, right, in the family. No, it's... Say you're the one with the mental health issue, I'm mental right? health. Like, what Say I, you're no. diagnosed with something. Like what? Uh, You're diagnosed with... Bipolar, uh, some type of psych issue. Oh, or, or even suicidal. Homicidal, right. suicidal ideation. Homicidal. Yeah. Right. So say if you're you're suicidal, and you say you want to kill yourself, right? Whoa! But you're you're medically cleared. Your vitals are good. There's no re no reason to go to the emergency room. They can potentially take you to Desert Parkway Hospital, where you can get care immediately for your mental. But, but um, you you're bleeding because someone shot you. Why are they worried if about? If you're bleeding, your you wouldn't medical. be going directly to a mental health facility. You'd be going to the emergency. That's what I. That's my point. Right. If you're in an emergency, you go to emergency. Right. So what does that have to do? If with you're yeah, if there's a, a gun wound or something to that effect or or uh, any type of injury, injury, you go to emergency. You go to the emergency. emergency. Right. They don't but say, hey, hey, time. you got to bleed, but hey, he's crazy. You know, right. last week he said he's like, smoke <laughs> weed all day. Smoke <laughs> weed all day. Let's take him to the, the, the site, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost, but go ahead. You guys, this is your field. Right. If, if there's no type of medical complexity, bleeding, uh, heart condition. Then he can go to. He, right, go exactly to, right over to Desert Parkway. Okay. And we're, we're a psych hospital. That we treat all type of behavioral health issues. Us, uh, like, uh, like a real like one screw over the super. Uh, kind of, kind of, kind of a more of 
more advanced yes. than from the yeah. 70s. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's somebody that thinks you're the president, right? <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, potentially, we don't know, but you know, they also have a veterans unit, right? We have a military unit. Uh, I pretty much deal with military because I don't now that, now that's so, very serious. Uh, we need I'll, to help them out. Oh, yeah, definitely. We definitely, definitely need to help uh, them. Vegas is one of the leading cities of veteran uh, suicides. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but you so, know, I was also at the mayor's challenge um, last month, and they were saying that the numbers have reduced by one percent here, and we're the only place where it's reduced by one percent, even with our veterans, right. Um, we're, we have a lot of guys that come here and retire, uh, yeah. after they get out, uh, retire and, uh, as well as just come here and live, uh, something different. Uh, and there's a lot of veteran organizations that have formed here within the recent years. Like one group I'm with is called MVP, Merging Vets. Are you really? Yes. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in reserve now. I went back into the reserve. Okay. All yeah. Right, so all I'll, right. probably, I'll probably be deploying next year. Okay. All yeah, right. So all right, brother. Uh, you know, I got you. What, 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 what brand? I was active duty Air Force and now I'm Army Reserve. You gotta be smart to be in the Air Force. Uh, yeah, you do. I mean, you gotta be, you know. You, you have, a, have to have a clean record to be in the Air Force. You don't have to have a clean record to be with everybody? Yeah, but Air Force. my uncle got kicked out the Army. I'm like, how do you get kicked Air, out the Army? Air Force is a lot more stringent. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I know they, I know they, yeah, yeah. you gotta be bad. You, oh, yeah. Yeah, to be, yeah. yeah is it like the testing that you do kind of determines where you wanna go? Well, or? no. Everyone take the same test. Okay. But with the Air Force, pretty much all the branches, they do a background check. But yeah. the Air Force, they do a juvenile check. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so you have anything in your juvenile record? Yeah. Don't even think about it. Really? Okay. Really. Because you ain't going to be getting one of those 17 billion dollar planes <sighs> right. to be cruising. Right, right. You know, <laughs> but but, but at, at our hospital, we have a military and veterans unit that uh, we cater to military and veterans only. Okay. Uh, no one can go on the floor if, if you're not, um, f well, first responders as well. First responders and um, military. Okay. And uh, so, and we, they have special privileges on the floor because they are uh, military and- uh, Like what? For, they have a workout facility. Oh, uh, okay. Workout room. Okay. Uh, like when I was active duty and where I was stationed, uh, the, the morale was low. So for my yeah. actual curricular activity, I used to just go train, go work out. Yeah. So, uh, as well as other military personnel, uh, for their extracurricular activity, they go work out, go train. So we created a room mm -hmm. where they go there um, and they work out whatever stress they're feeling. And I was that, watching that's something this yoga. morning on the news about um, yoga for veterans or something like that. Did you hear about that? We have yoga at our facility. Okay. Uh, and and the, uh, the group that I'm with, MVP, they do yoga every Friday, pr pr almost every other Friday. They mm -hmm. do a yoga session. Uh, Yoga has been proven to uh, relieve stress. Yeah, I like yoga. I, I don't like chocolate yoga, though. Yoga. Y-O-G-A. Yeah. <laughs> Not yoga. Yeah. Uh, it, it increased, uh, like I said, uh, it, it increased flexibility. Uh, yoga helps in so many ways uh, with your body. I'm going to so, try it. I'm going to actually try it. If we, if we pour, I tried it. You know, I did it for a week, and I did something wrong, and I injured my knee, and it's swollen. Yeah. So I don't know what that's about. <laughs> for for, for people that's having yeah, circulation problems <laughs> and so much blood circulation, mm -hmm. yeah. yoga has been proven to improve circulation. Really? As well as flexibility. People have back problems. Yeah. They have been known to be healed from back problems after doing yoga. I, I, I need to, but is it the big room? Which one? I mean, well, that's the hot one. Oh, the hot yoga. They do hot, with the hot yoga, uh, with the heat, it helps relax the muscles even more so besides right. the yoga. So you even become even more flexible when you do hot yoga. Right, right. And which which it helps. But your the body. problem is, I got my silk press done by Tony mm. at A Hair Studio. I want to give you a shout out. Mm. But the thing is, is that when you get that press, no, you can't even talk about no press. Well, well I'm talking about the press. The yoga, I'm gonna try the yoga. It kind of like you know, it's like, well, I can't do yoga today because I just got my hair. Come on, yeah. boy, you know yeah. I'm actually, I need to. I'm getting older, so I see a lot of uh, stuff in my respiratory. Right. In my, right. in my, my, I'm like, like I, I see, like, you know, I'm walking, like, yeah, I'm not gonna be walking up these stairs. We need it. Oh, trust me. No, no, I mean, I know. I know. You saying blacks are the fat people? Yes. I, I mean, <laughs> overall, I mean, because because as we get older, I, I, as a community, you know, our eating 
plays effect in our lives. Right. I'm changing my and, and right have, now. Right. I'm changing. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going plant based, but not all because I know why they call them Impossible Burgers. Because it's impossible to pass the toilet. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, boy, I couldn't get two feet without yesterday. Boy, I was wild. I noticed your hand was shaking when you brought that water up to your mouth. Listen, you understand. That drink water. Possible burger, but D. But I've been doing vegetables, so uh, what were we have yesterday? Some poxy yuba vegetables. Mm-hmm. But that's from you know vegetables. Now. Right, right, right. And even with my own self, um, I've been cutting back on meats and a lot of carbs. It takes about two, three days. And once you adjust your body after two, three days cutting back, uh, your body come adjusted and you feel a difference you need, as well as energy in your yeah, body. Yeah, sure. You know? But you need like a, like a huge support system. I remember I tried to go vegan and I needed to call every vegan I knew to keep me on the path because no, you know I was hungry. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's hard. It is. It is. Because there's no, it's, it's not really for people. You hungry in Vegas? They have pictures of burgers of 19 feet long, yeah. steaks 40 feet wide, shrimps 30 feet wide. There's no place to go. I, I, I want some vegetables. Right. Where's the, the vegetable place? Yeah. They have a salad bar at all of them. Come on, yeah. anybody going all the room? See them get no salad. Yeah. Right. Walk through it. Unless you grow yeah, in garden, which, yeah. I, which I've always done, even when I lived back home in Kentucky. I always have my own garden. Um, what part of Kentucky? Louisville, Kentucky, born and raised. And Tim's from, from a Ohio. huge family. So yeah, I'm, getting I, I, back I, I, to I, like laughter, I, 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 what I, I, was it like growing up oh, man. in a huge household with 15 brothers uh, and sisters? No, I have 10 brothers, four sisters. Okay. Uh, Richie has 16, but one died, so it fits me almost living. I'm I'm the eighth child, but when you go from top to bottom, I'm the eighth child in the middle. Okay. Uh, growing up home, uh, 15 children in a single parent home, it was tough. Oh. You know, uh, I never had uh, no one to really talk to me about anything. Uh, I had to pretty much teach myself how to be a man. Cause my my big brothers, they didn't know how to be a father or be a a role model because they was boys themselves. Your father wasn't there? And he, no, he was not oh, there. Man, yeah, Papa was the Rolling Stone. I got you. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really right. lucky. Right, yeah. so, so I mean, even psychological growing up, I had to, you know, uh, for many years, I dealt with different barriers in life. Sure. Sure. You know, psychologically. Yeah, you know, just, just, yeah. just uh, you know, um, different things. Even becoming a, a father myself, I had to learn a lot. You know, my kids taught me a lot. And, and you want all the often in patience, besides being married, uh, yeah. children. Children will teach you a patience mm. you do not have. Right. Wow. You know, children will teach you some some things in life, you know, that that will help you in life. I think we were talking about how you can be so angry, but then somehow your child will get you to start laughing. Oh you have to God. leave the room because it's so funny, I, right? I have three children, and all my children are taught the music at an early age, right? Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, with my children, one day I was furious with my children. They did something that. Uh, that they know they weren't supposed to do. Uh, I'm a huge disciplinary person. But anyway, uh, they were doing something that they knew they weren't supposed to do. And I, and I was mad. And, I, and, and with my children, I don't whip them. I, when I do spank them, I don't spank them spirit, uh, you know, real quick. I, I wait for a moment to let myself calm down. Because right. the old-fashioned way, with friends, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I had plenty of beatings. You know, yeah. like slavery beatings. Yeah. Like, you know, roots beatings. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, so... Yeah. With, I learned by oh, yeah. that with my children, I have to pretty much collect myself before I spank them. But anyway, I mean, a long story short, um, my children did something that made me furious. Mm-hmm. Then the, my son coughed, and, and the way he sounded, I said, man, you sound like you horse. He said, a horse? He said, what are you, an elephant? <laughs> and when he said that, I paused and looked at him, and I had to, I had to turn my head and, and laugh. Yeah. And by turning around, making that, uh, I guess, expression or making uh, that laughter that came out, right? it changed that, what was I upset for? Exactly. What did mm. you do again? Right. You know, so. Mm. So the way that the It wasn't like he was the boy of power. Right? <laughs> I was like, why isn't he whooping his ass? Right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my children, you know, old fashioned way, when your parents look at you, you know what's going on. That's the way my children are with me. All I got to do is look at them. And yeah. they're like, oh, man. Look. So 
my children weren't in so, in so much as, as a lot of other kids just out there. Uh, my children don't know what it is to have some uh, tantrum. Because even as babies, as, uh, when they used to have tantrums, I used to just tap their leg lightly and say no. So my, my kids never had any type of tantrums. But, you mm. know, they, they've been kids. They're going to be kids. Right. So, you know, like I said, they did something that just, you know, that they know they weren't supposed to. But, you know, children, they tried me. So oh, they yeah. tried me. Uh, however, um, when, you know, I was upset with them and uh, I was telling my son, you sound like you're a horse. Then for him to come back at me like, uh, he, th he thought I was calling him a horse. Right. And... You've heard the then, yeah. Yeah. Then, 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 he, then he was like, what are you, an elephant? And I look at him like, I have to pretty much, like I said, turn my head and laugh. Yeah. And after that laughter came, right. you know. It, it changed the whole mood. It, it changed the whole mood. Yeah, right? like, this boy crazy. That's, that's that, what laughter yeah. does, right? Yeah. So, like, even with learning, I was looking, I was researching online, and I went to, uh, what is this, physiology.org. And there was a study that talks about laughter and how it helps to increase learning. Of course. So relationships with your children or as a teacher, if you incorporate humor, it can help the learning process, right? People are more receiving to hear what you have to say. So Faison, that's why I want to ask you, uh -oh. <laughs> what is the difference between when you are- She got big breath. Laughing, no, when you're laughing um, about something as opposed to where you have to create laughter for others. First of all, I'm not creating a laughter. Okay. It's, uh, it's an ob observation on basis of something I see. Okay. And then they see it too, so we, we actually laugh or it's a wink together. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's not really um, a clown. A clown creates. Yip, 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 yip. That's the difference. Okay. A comedian is ob it's an observation. And it's like, hey, uh, you know, just like the Impossible Burger. I, my observation, if you eat that, <laughs> you're going to be boo booing. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why y'all laughing is because y'all know. It's going to happen. It's gonna have somebody that had one in here and didn't almost. If you don't make it to the bathroom, yeah. it's gonna be impossible to clean them pants. It's always like a shared understanding because we get there it. You and go. That's what makes it fun. And that's all it is. That's all I'm in is bringing bringing that up. Especially like we have a lot of same experiences that some of us don't, and then to share those. That's what a comedy is. This is just your, your truth. So what about when it's inappropriate laughter? What do you mean? Right, like if you're if you're laughing at someone or you tell a joke, a, not you per se, just someone right. who say, who thinks something's funny and it's really not funny. But that's you ever look at some art and you're like that's ugly. Have I ever heard someone say like that? Have you ever looked at some art and said oh, that's ugly? Some art. Right. I don't recall. Or even laugh at. It. I just I yeah. try to understand it. Well, you're trying to, but yeah. everybody's not going to get it. Right. right, right. We're not. We're not. Everybody's not gonna get it. But to 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 make fun of somebody mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. you know a homeless person that's not cool. Right. I mean, it's like mm, or whatever or you or, or um. There's there's too far, but it's based on the comedian. I would never tell a comedian, look, if you can, if you gonna say it, you gotta you gotta you gotta wait you gotta carry that cross. Right. Like the you know the thing now we can't talk about gay people and <laughs> it's like uh, I'm gonna talk mm -hmm. about gay people because mm -hmm. that's part of your family. Okay, we can't talk about we can talk about fat people. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. and no one says anything, so we should be able to talk about everybody, right? The full spectrum. As a comedian. Yeah. If it's my it's it's my vision. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, you can't tell me what I'm seeing. Well, I was listening to this interview and they were talking about how you know society evolves. So what uh, may have been evolves. evolves. Really? So as something may have been funny <laughs> in the '70s, oh really? And making like 
a, a gay joke, but it's not going to be funny. Right. That's stupid. In 2000. That's stupid. Right. Why That's is that stupid. Stupid. I can play Eddie Murphy's album, and I guarantee you'll be on the floor. The Raw? Raw? No, Delirious. 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 The one where he was talking about uh, Mr. D. Hey, boy. Yeah. Come on here. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. It's funny. But you guys have been bothered by uh, PC and, hey, don't say this and don't say. Dave Chappelle said some brilliant stuff in his last thing. And one of the things was uh, the standard of practice joke. And he said, um, hey, we don't say the word fact. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. Because he says, why? Because you're, you're, not, you're not gay. He says, uh, but I can say nigga. Right. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Well, you don't, but black people are not enraged about that. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. You guys choose to pick. Right. Pick which one be offended. By. Oh, I'm offended because they're right. offended. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Black people should be offended by right. everything in America. Mm -hmm. Everything. But you're told to what to be. You're told. Well, what are your thoughts on, I was watching uh, you're told. an interview with Byron Allen when he came Ooh, up with the whole I love podcast him. thing. Yeah. Oh, that, that brother impressed. right there. Oh, my God. I was like almost in tears after 10 minutes. Oh, like, no, no. I've been. Up, I've been. Listen, yeah, when know. I was younger, yeah. I wanted to be Eddie Murphy. Uh -huh. When I became a man, I wanted to be Byron Allen. Right. Byron Allen is the truth. Yeah. The truth. And has been. I've been telling people about him for years. Who? Oh, all right, you'll see. Right. You'll see. Doing that for the longest. And, and you know, articulate, smart. And just and, and just and you know the fact that he's so down with Dr. King, a lot of black people don't even understand yeah. what Dr. King meant. You know, people. He spoke about Coretta Scott a lot. Yes, because right. yeah. that's that's that, that's the right. That's the right. You understand what she had to go through? Right. Right. <laughs> House getting bombed. People act like that's nothing. They can't even take. People can't even take. Insults. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> about somebody bombing I'm you mad, out. I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he said they were bombing their house while they were asleep. She had to. I have to tell people because they don't know. Do you know how Dr. King's mother died? I heard she, Are you shot in the, I she heard she shot was shot in the church, right? She sure was. On the yeah. organ. Yes. She was on the organ. This guy shot in the organ. I'm like, yeah, his mom. Why? Why don't we hear about that? Because you're mad at what they tell you to be We're mad. We're hitting at. the table. <laughs> <laughs> you're mad at what they're telling you to be mad at. Right, right. You're mad. Oh, the filler buster. Tell me now. Tell me now, son. What I'm mad about? Yes, exactly. Yeah. People, people, <laughs> black people are so funny because when Trump became president, they were like, "Oh my God!" Like black people's problems just started. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Trump is the beginning of black people's problems? No, it's an illusion. So, so what do you got coming up, Faison? What's going on? Oh, from Why are you in jail? How are you doing? What's up? <laughs> that, was, that was a hell of a... Back to Faison. <laughs> I'm going to be a bucket on chicken. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell just happened? Everyone's phones are going off. Well, what happened just now? <laughs> so where are you going to be at? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, uh, I'm going to be at home. <laughs> I'm going to be at the Tropicana. You're going to be at the Tropicana? That was hilarious. So where you going to be at? Was that hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, so the black man. So where you going to be at? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So the Tropicana this week, right? Yes. Tropicana Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You going to be there? Okay. Yeah. 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 Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Tropic Canada. Um, Show starts at 7.30? I guess. I don't know. This, it's just, you can call the Tropic Canada to find out how I much guess. tickets are. I don't know. I don't have the number to the Tropic Canada, but you can find them online. And you can see Faison <laughs> tomorrow, starting tomorrow night. I'll be there. It's Those tomorrow. Is it yep, tomorrow? Yep, tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Oh, wow. That's why this was perfect timing for you to be here today. Well, you've been, you know, you've been, you know, like, hey, you know, congratulations to your show. So this, this, uh, this is it, the world. This is a new show for oh. me. This year, this is the third show. 
So, oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so oh, thank yeah, okay. you so much for oh. being here. Oh, okay. I really appreciate it. Well, hey, you got a lot. You can get a lot of <laughs> favor. Yeah. Thank they you. Say we can't talk about. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Faison. Thank you, Tim Harden, for sharing yeah, information you, about your personal life and also about information on desert. Growing up in Kentucky. Halfway. <laughs> I grew up in Kentucky. <laughs> I love it over there. Yeah, the bluegrass stay for real. Oh yeah, it's, it's, I've it's, never been to Kentucky. What? Yeah, no. it's different. What? No. Kentucky is real. Yeah. yeah. During the during the um, Derby. Oh my God. Oh yeah. I've been in Derby. Oh yeah, the Kentucky Derby. Okay. <laughs> Where yeah. black people started. Oh okay. Oh. You didn't know that, did you? No, I did not. Yeah. Yeah. The jockeys were black. Yeah. Is that why they have the jockeys on the front lines that are black? Or they they were black at first until or? money got involved. That's right. Okay. Money got involved. That's right. That's affecting all that change. All right, guys. Just like, you know, all right, guys, get out those horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, Spanky. Come on, get out that horse. We had, a, we had another guy yeah, with the black. Because it's very dangerous riding those horses. Uh, yeah, I ride horses. Do you? Yeah, I do. But like this, yeah, like I they can riding. gallop the horse. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm riding. You no, not like them. They doing that. Some they not low. That fast. They low. <laughs> A fast gallop is good. They low. I mean, I think the first. Um, I'm not wrong. The first um, uh, all j black jockey team was called the Jockey Club. In that's the, a club in L.A. No, it's a. It came from the original jockeys in. Kentucky, okay. they were all black jockeys called the Jockey Club. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for the education. <laughs> we're not this here boy, for that. He, he's funny and he is smart. <laughs> we're not here for that. We want to hear jokes at the Tropicana. Yeah, we'll be at the Tropicana starting tomorrow night at 7.30. Thank you again, my guests, for being here. I want to give a shout out to Lex as well, being in the building. Thank you for coming by this morning. And for all the great wine we share together. So anyway, this is Andre Pollard with It's Where I Am. Please check me out on my website. This interview will be on there as well as the previous one last month with Mark Nelson. And it is itswhereiam.com. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. It's Where I Am. KCP, keep it the people. <laughs> All right.